In order to prolong the life of your scope, we recommend that you follow the next procedure. What we're going to do is we are going to mix a solution of enzymatic, um, which is designed to eat protein and pathology, and obviously clean the inside of the, your scope. It is important to wear gloves when you're using enzymatic. It is quite um, quite a nasty substance in as much as it, it will cause damage to your skin if you don't use uh, gloves whilst using it. Because this scope is fully immersible, some scopes won't be, so please, if you're not sure, ring out the technical department and they will give you some uh, advice as to which scopes are immersible and which aren't. What we're going to do is attach the leak tester. We're going to inflate again to the top of the grey area, 160 milligrams of mercury. And the scope is, uh, shouldn't be leaking at all before you immerse it in the, in the chemistry. So I'm quite happy now to immerse everything apart from the leak tester into the enzymatic. Okay, with the, uh, the scope immersed in the enzymatic, we have to ensure that the leak tester remains dry, so that stays outside of the sink, and that the, the pointer remains constant at the 160 milligrams of mercury. If that pointer starts to drop, take the, the scope out of the, the chemistry and phone our service department. Could be something that we need to talk to you about over the phone. What we have to do is to flush the scope through with enzymatic and by removing this biopsy port here and attaching our flushing adapter, we get a small syringe draw up the enzymatic and flush through the scope. Now ideally we could do this two or three times until all we get is a steady stream of fluid as opposed to bubbles. And again keep an eye on the leak tester that, that shouldn't be dropping at all. So we do that a couple of times. Then the next thing we're going to do is to actually brush through the channel. So we take our cleaning brush the cleaning brush is the brush with the ball on the end that it is designed to push any pathology through the scope. So we now remove the flushing adapter and with the biopsy for us with the biopsy forceps we feed the brush through nice short strokes so we don't cause any kinks in the body of the brush and it will emerge from the, the distal tip end. We clean the brush through of any pathology and then withdraw the brush. dilution rates and the timing. The timing for ours is 10 minutes um, and it shouldn't be left in, in the uh, chemistry for any longer than the allotted time. So we'd now let that sit for 10 minutes. We would then remove the scope from the enzymatic, rinse that off with cold water. We will then mix up our disinfectant and again follow your uh, manufacturer's guidelines to, uh, to the dilution rates and the timing and what we do is we follow the same procedure as before make sure that the leak tester is kept outside of the chemistry place the scope in the disinfectant and we simply flush through two or three times to make sure that we flush out any enzymatic it's actually inside the scope. Again, our chemistry recommends 10 minutes, and that's fine. And what we do is to remove that again. We then dispose of the disinfectant, and we flush through two or three times again with clean water. Doesn't have to be distilled water or deionized water. 
but if you use something like a Milton sterilizing fluid or something like that for your final flush through that would be absolutely fine. So what we do next is we have to make sure that the scope is dry so by getting a cloth or a towel remove the pressure from your leak tester and being careful just dry the scope off and just a little tip here in order to help to dry the channel out what we're going to do is just flush air through the channel until you're fairly happy that there's no fluid actually coming out from the end of the scope the scope should then either be hung up to dry on a hanger or put back in the case and stored correctly.